<clears throat> Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to look at linear functions, and in particular, the graphs of linear functions. What is a linear function? A function that is defined by an equation of this form, f of x equal mx plus b, where the m and the b stand for any real numbers, is called a linear function. And in a minute, we'll see why we call it linear. Notice this is written in function notation. The f of x plays the role of y. So right here we have an example of a linear function, and we're going to look at its graph in a rather straightforward way. Let's suppose that we look at this graph by just making a table of values and plugging in some numbers and seeing what the graph looks like. So I'm looking for a few solutions, and I want to pick some values of x that I could plug in as the independent variable, and see what I get for y or f of x. Um, I really don't like fractions very much, so I'm going to try to pick values of x that are easy. I like 0. If I plug in a 0, 0 times anything is 0, and add 2 to that, you get 2. So that's an, that's an easy point. But I'm sure we need more than one point to know what this graph looks like. If I pick um, negative 5 and positive 5, those would actually be pretty easy numbers to work with because when I plug them in for x, the fives would divide out. Uh, with a negative five, the fives would divide out and I'd have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. Three plus two would give me a five. So if x is negative five, y would be five. If x is 5, plugging that in, the 5's divide out, I'd have negative 3 plus 2, and that would give me negative 1. And because I want to use this little uh, grid that I have on the left side over here, probably much more than that would kind of go off the page. So let's just sort of be happy enough with that and see what this looks like. Maybe we'll need some more. So the point 0, 2 would be right here. And the point negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 would be right here. And the point 5, negative 1 would be right here. And I think you can see pretty clearly why we might call this a linear function. Just looking at those points, it looks pretty clear that the graph will be a straight line. Let's draw a straight line through these points. At least as straight as I'm capable of drawing. We'll say that. That's not too bad. And if I plugged in a few more points, I could see that that definitely is a straight line. Uh, I could just do a few more calculations. Now, interestingly enough, when you look at the constants that are in the definition uh, of this particular function, they tell you something interesting. Look very carefully at the graph and see if you have see something that has to do with the number 2. If you notice 2 is the y value where the graph crosses the y-intercept, crosses the y-axis. We call that the y-intercept. So that 2 at the end tells me the graph crosses the y-axis at 2. The negative 3 fifths is a little bit trickier to see. But what I want to do is I want to pick two of the points that I plotted, and I want to explore how the graph moves from one point to another. Suppose I was looking at these two points, and I wanted to describe how the graph moved from the point on the left to the point on the right. I want to notice something. This graph seems to go down and to the right. How much down does it go? One, two, three places from positive 2 to negative 1. It goes down by three places. A very common, somewhat old-fashioned, but still popular word we do use to describe that dropping is the rise. We say that the graph has a rise of negative 3, which means as you move from point to point, the graph goes down three units. Also, the graph moves to the right. Let me use a different color here. As the graph moves down three units, it also moves over some to the right. And if I count places there, one, two, three, four, five, that's five places. So 
the the motion upward or downward is called the rise. The motion left or right is traditionally called the run. And now if you look at that negative three-fifths in the equation, you realize that that negative three-fifths is the rise divided by the run. And we have a wonderful word for that. That is referred to as the slope. Now we're going to study slope in greater detail elsewhere, but from what we've seen already, we can see some very important observations that we can use to graph linear functions quickly. The graph of a linear function defined by an equation of the form we looked at will first of all always be a straight line. That's where we get the word linear from, in fact. And in the equation, the m is the slope, the rise over the run, and the y-intercept is the b. Now, if you have that, we can actually graph a linear function very fast without making a table of values at all, simply looking at these two values. So look at the next example I want to explore, uh, f of x equal 2x minus 4. The 2 is in the position of the m, which is the slope. And we talked about how slope is rise over run, but this is not a fraction. However, any whole number can be made into a fraction by putting it over 1. And then there is a sense of a rise over a run. The negative 4, the, the thing in the b position, that would be the y-intercept. Now, how do you use this to very quickly draw the graph? Well, what you do first is you start with the y-intercept. That's the place where the line will cross the y-axis. It'll cross it at negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's right here. Starting with the y-intercept, the slope will tell you how the line can move from that point to another point. A rise of 2 means going up. Positive numbers mean up, negative numbers go down. So we go up 2 units, and then we run, we go to the right 1 unit, that's not very easy to mark there, up 2, right 1. Now, I can actually plot that line from just two points, but if I want something a little bit more accurate, I can just keep going from point to point. At any given point, go up to right one, up to right one, up to right one, and you very clearly see a line forming. Connect that up, connect the dots, so to speak, and you will see a straight line with a slope of two, and a y-intercept of negative 4. And that gives you the graph of that linear function very fast. Let's do one more and then make a quick observation. All right, so m is the slope. That's the 5 fourths. b is the y-intercept. The y-intercept goes first. So start with the y-intercept of negative 3, 3 units down. And then from there, let the slope tell you how you move from point to point, remembering that this is the rise over the run. So a rise of five means you would count up five units from this point. One, two, three, four, five. That's a rise of five. And a run, that's how far you would move horizontally. 4 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. Rise of 5, run of 4. The graph would begin at the y-intercept and eventually pass through that point. And frankly, two points is enough to see the graph of a line. Just connect those up, and that is the graph of your linear function. Oh, here's something that happens every once in a while. If you get sloppy and you miss a point, just make the point a little bit bigger, and you'll hit it. I want to make one other observation. All of these were lines, but if you look at the, the three graphs we have, two of them moved upwards as you read from them from left to right, and one of them moved downwards as you moved from left to right. 
Notice the difference in the slopes. That's where you're going to see this. Notice that this slope is negative, but this slope is positive, and this slope is positive. We can make the following conclusion. If the slope of a linear function is positive, the graph rises as you read it from left to right. More technically, we say that the function is increasing. But if the slope of the linear function is negative, the graph falls as you read it from left to right, goes down. And technically, we say that the function is decreasing. Now, that's all there is to graphing linear functions. Hope that helps.